How would you feel if your son or daughter, your brother or sister, your mother or father were kidnapped, tortured, and then murdered? You would be devastated, angry, fearful, right? Thinking you may be next? Well, how do you think animals feel? Sure, they don't have the standards that we do to make us believe that we're superior. They don't have cars or briefcases or iPods, but they have compassion for their fellow species. Animals, just like us, mourn for the loss of their loved ones. On farms, cattle have been reported to lie down in the spot of missing fellow cattle and cry out. For days they can do this. When chickens notice if a fellow fowl is missing, they panic. Don't fool yourself to think that farm factories are part of the norm. They're not. According to the WE, the beating of a turkey to death with a crowbar is an acceptable practice in U.S. farming of animals. Acceptable to bludgeon a living being to death? Maybe our standards have become a bit skewed. We all bow our heads in respect and remorse for those lost in the Holocaust. Well, you know what? Animals and farm factories experience their Holocaust every day with no political hope to keep them optimistic. But I won't rant to you using simple scare tactics. But the fact of the matter is that it is real and it is scary. My first words as a baby was meat. They called me Rambo. I was a meatitarian for years. The bloodier, the better. But then I went to a college in New York that exposed me to the, the ignored barbarics behind the preparation of the meats I love so much. I saw pictures of baby cows crying out for their mothers, dead pig bodies piled four deep. I saw movies of cattle being hung upside down alive, bleeding out slowly, all the while crying out. Chickens being stomped to death simply for being in the way of a factory worker. So immediately I went vegetarian. All my years of meat eating suddenly felt so selfish. In another theory that is steadily growing, Owen of the Cure Zone Association claims that you actually consume the negative energies felt by the animal just before its death. You absorb its fear, its sadness, its pain. These animals were born with the emotions to love their mother, to mourn their loss, and to fear death. But they also were given the chance of survival. These factories take all of that away. They still possess the emotions, but are never given the chance to nestle with their mothers. They are born and taken away to be pumped full of chemicals, tormented and murdered. For what? For us to order their flesh at a diner? Cook to how we like it? To all parents out there, imagine what you would go through, what would go through your mind. The second your baby arrives, he or she is taken away from you forever. It's unbearable. I was going to show you these pictures and videos I witnessed, but instead I will share with you more humane information. The school I went to focused a huge portion on the time, focused on health, and a large portion of the time we discussed why animal flesh is nutritionally bad for you. According to the China Health Project's data, heart disease and stroke are responsible for 50% of U.S. deaths. Roughly 95% of these deaths can be prevented by simply becoming a vegetarian. Also, around 80% of breast cancer cases can pre be prevented as well simply by not consuming animal meat. All animal meat has naturally occurring trans fats. Once the meat is cooked, these fats begin to solidify and put a great amount of strain on your heart. This raises your blood pressure and also clogs your arteries. Also, an organization called Dolphin Home has scientifically proven that during the process of digestion, the animal digesting the animal proteins, the hormones, the antibiotics, and the chemical toxins that the animal has been exposed to are released in the human body. These chemical reactions within us actually block cancer-fighting agents in the body. The blockage of the cancer-fighting agents combined with the trans fats is a deadly combination. The good cholesterol within your body is lowered as the bad cholesterol skyrockets. Ever notice how you feel sluggish and flush after eating a big steak? It's your body fighting to break down these complex proteins 
and trying to keep up with increased blood flow to your heart. It's the same reason you feel like taking a nap after a huge meal. Your body goes into system overload and has to save energy to process this, amass this massive amount of food. The consistency of meat protein is a very difficult thing for the digestive system to break up. It exerts a great amount of energy in the beginning and eventually runs low on fuel. So the leftover pieces of the protein that the body could not break up go into a sort of a storage mode. This is when your body holds on to fats and allows the trans fats to enter your system. In a riveting article presented by, P by the PETA organization, scientific proof backs the conscious decision to become a vegetarian if for no other reason than for your own health. By consuming animal fats, the amount of saturated fats in the body as well as the bad cholesterol raises significantly. By consuming plants rather than animals, it actually prevents heart disease as well as many other ailments. The fibers in the plant help to break down the leftover fats and proteins, and the chlorophyll in the greens help the oxygen in the blood flow much faster and with greater ease, therefore flushing the trans fats along. So in closing, I would like to refer anyone who is interested in a bit of cruelty enlightenment to visit the PETA website. They have many of the behind the scene pictures and videos of the cruelty that goes on. Also, my school, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, has amazing articles on the nutritional benefits of going vegetarian. It's a huge lifestyle change to drop meat out of your diet. But the sooner you allow your system to process out all of the remaining meat proteins, the quicker you begin to feel better. The sluggish feeling goes away and you begin to feel lighter on your feet. Everything becomes much more clear and quick in your head thanks to the healing properties of the plants. You begin to feel renewed. But if you feel this is too much, too much to ask to change in your own life, that is understandable. I'm sure the baby cattle will understand. They will continue to die horrible deaths so that you can enjoy the taste of their flesh. The mother cattle will continue to sacrifice their children so that you may enjoy the tender meat of their babies. So if you don't feel like changing your life, go ahead and continue to take the lives of the vulnerable animals. I'm sure they don't mind.